Hi, it's Mr. Smith, and in this video, I'm going to go through the syllabus for College Algebra, the co-requisite version. Notice here it says that this course is linked with DMAT 0315. So it's basically two courses in one, and um, basically you're doing um, beginning and intermediate algebra as you work towards getting College Algebra credit. So it's a great opportunity, but it's a lot of work. Um, contacting your instructor. This is true with all instructors at Dallas College. You should hear back from us within 24 hours. Normally you'll hear back from me much sooner than that. On occasion though, a, an email will get through, so please email me again if you don't hear back within 24 hours, and I will apologetically get back to you. Um, but again, most of the time I'm pretty good about getting back on emails contact information. You can see my name is Scott Smith. My name is uh, Scott is spelled with one T. So that's actually my nickname. You can call me one T or Mr. Smith. Uh, my email address is Scott Smith at dallascollege.edu. Again, notice the one T. My phone number is 972-677-8940. I would recommend that you email me or give me a call. I have had some issues with the text. I eventually get them, but not as timely as I would hope. Um, if you want to have a conversation, give me a call. All right, so my office is J127. Of course, that's in the J building. Uh, office hours will be announced in, this, for, in the first week of school or shortly thereafter. If for some reason you need to talk to someone in the division office, there's their contact information. Uh, so again, this is College Algebra or Math 1314. Our section is 21102. And you can see our hours weekly are Mondays and Wednesdays from 8 to 920 and 930 to 1050 in the morning in room M212, which is a tiny little room but we are pretty small. There's just 18 of us in this class. Uh, the certification date for this course is September 6th. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, last day to withdraw is November 10th. I just want to remind students, um, it's always a good idea to talk to your instructor. That would be me. You know, I can, can maybe offer some perspective and help you make a good choice. Also, um, you may have financial aid or things with the veterans office that you need to, you know, you need to talk to those people. So just make sure you do it the right way. Sometimes students will just take off and just not stop coming to class and they come back a couple years later and they find that they're on probation. So I don't want to see that happen to you. Make sure you take care of your withdrawal the right way if for some reason you need to do that. In this course, you need to be college level ready in mathematics at the algebra base level. Here's your course description and student learning outcomes. Uh, that just goes through some of the details of what we'll be talking about this semester. The Texas core objectives. Uh, notice there are six there, and these are things that we emphasize throughout our courses at the college. These are things, skills that we want you to leave with. And so you should look through those if you haven't seen those before. Uh, let's talk about the required course materials. In this class, it's just My Lab Math, which is an online program in which you're going to be, uh, well, first of all, your textbook is going to be in there. And you'll also do your assignments in My Math Lab. So basically online. And uh, this is our book that we'll be using. You'll have a virtual copy of that. If you want a paper copy, uh, there is a place I show you on the video tour of eCampus and my math lab where you can request that. They are about 55 bucks though. And then um, the other thing I should mention about the include ad program is the materials are included with your tuition. Um, in the past, students sometimes had opted out to try to save money. It's been my experience that students don't save any money by opting out, and normally it just leads to problems. So I strongly discourage you from opting out of the Include Ed program. Um, 
The other thing I want to talk about here is the TI graphing calculator. Um, all students must have a graphing calculator. It's not part of the Include Ed program. Uh, the one I'll be using is a CE TI-84. And um, I recommend that you have the TI-84. An 83 will also work. Um, these other calculators are not allowed. Um, the nice thing is if you go to the library early in the semester, first come, first serve, they will rent calculators, uh, the TI-84 and it's free, so get over there quickly. On the other hand, if you are taking a bunch of other math courses, particularly calculus courses, then I would encourage you to have your own calculator. All right, so obviously, if you're doing all your assignments on the internet, uh, you're going to need a reliable computer and internet service, so it's very important that you have that. If that's an issue, I would encourage you to talk to me and maybe we can help. There's some things we might be able to do. Um, the other thing is to register for my math lab. You basically do that through eCampus and so you might want to read this line here. Um, summary of graded work. So notice homework is 16% of your grade, quizzes is 8%, tests are 56%, and the final is 20%. Um, on the test, there's seven tests, so basically each is 8%. Notice the final is one-fifth of your grade, so it's very important at the end of the course that you can, you know, show me that you've learned a good majority of the material. Um, so it's really important as you're going through this semester is you keep asking yourself, am I learning the material? And think about what you can do to, uh, to learn the material long-term. And we'll talk about that in class. So your final grade is dependent on or dependent on the typical uh, percentages. So 90 to 100 is an A and so on. Notice the way that you're graded for DMAT 0315. So basically after test 5, I will update grades and that's your grade for 0315. However, let's say that your grade is not passing, it's not at least a C, um, if you t go all the way through the course and you get a D in Math 1314, then that qualifies you for a, a C grade in DMAT 0315. And so that way, even though you would have to retake uh, the college algebra course, you would not have to take both of the courses. Um, of course, everybody wants to get through the first time. In order to pass college algebra, you should, uh, for most programs, you're going to need a C. Okay, description of graded work. So basically, I'll go over the different sections in class, and for each one of those, you're going to have a section of homework in My Lab Math. And uh, the nice thing about My Lab Math is that you know when you're doing problems right or wrong, because it's going to mark it right or wrong. If it's wrong, you'll have the opportunity to correct it. And there's help buttons. Uh, and so you can click on the resources to help you. The problem is sometimes students get a false, a false sense of security that they understand the homework. But in fact, they keep clicking on those help buttons. And the thing you have to ask yourself, though, is am I learning the material? And can I repeat this problem without a help button? And so one of the things I encourage you to do, other than to keep asking yourself that question, am I learning the material, is get a notebook and uh, use uh, do your problems in your notebook as you do the homework. When you get to quizzes or tests, then you can go back and look at your homework and you know make a note of the things that you struggled with, questions that you have, but later on, you can go back and review those concepts before you take a quiz or you take a test. The other thing, when you write things out, that's, for most people, that's helpful in the learning process. So again, I highly encourage you to have a notebook. Quizzes, um, on the quizzes, you won't have the help buttons. And so they're more like a test. They're also timed. You have 60 minutes. They usually cover about three sections. If you find yourself doing poorly on the quizzes, that's a good indication that 
you've got more work to do. And so I really encourage you to, um, you know, if, if you struggle with the quizzes, get some extra help. All right, we talked about the tests. The only thing I didn't mention was you're going to take your tests in the academic testing center outside cl regular class time. This course is jam-packed full, and for that reason, this is how we do the testing. I'm sorry for the inconvenience, but it makes things much more difficult if we do all seven tests in class. Uh, when we get to the first test, I'll, I'll let you know how that works in detail. Uh, let's look at the final exam. So it's a 25 question multiple choice test. It's 20% of your grade. And I'd also remind you that, again, you can replace your lowest test score with what you get on the final, as long as you have an 80% or better average on your homework. And so uh, the other thing I would also say is I always have students write out their work. So in the case of a borderline case, I can go back and look at the work to make a decision about which grade to give. All right, let's move on to the next section. All right, so you do have an opportunity to earn extra credit on the test for each test. Basically, we're going to do a review in class, and that's your number one priority to study that review and use that review to prepare for the test. On the other hand, if you do the review in my math lab, it'll give you more practice, and it'll also earn you some extra credit points. If your score is 90 to 100, you'll get five bonus points, all the way down to 70 to 74, where you get one bonus point. Um, highly encourage you to do those. Uh, students that tend to do those tend to do pretty well in the course. All right, late work policy. So for homework and quizzes, um, anything that's late is 25% off up until the day of the test. So in other words, after the test, you can't go back and do assignments for that test. And so it's important, really important in this course that you're staying on top of the assignments and following the calendar. You don't want to be doing assignments late. Uh, that'll get you in trouble real fast. So highly encourage you to stay on schedule. And you can get partial credit if you're late, but I, I really, again, I can't encourage you enough to get the assignments do, uh, done on time. Uh, let's see, the other thing I would say is, and this is true with any course at the college, if you miss class on the day of the test, or actually, if in this case, if you miss the deadline for taking the test, you should call that very day, contact me that very day, and if you have a legitimate reason, I will work with you to take the test after that point. But again, um, it should be an emergency. You should have legitimate reasons for doing that, and you need to contact me right away. And, um, you know, and, and I'm, I'll do everything I can to work with you in that case, but just really important that you're taking the tests when they're due. I give you normally about three or four day window. Don't wait till the last day if you can help it. All right, instructor student communication. So this is true when you're in college, really important that you are getting information that I send out. So when I make an announcement in eCampus, there's automatically announcement that is sent to your school email. So make sure that your email is correct in eConnect and that you're monitoring that email. And, and then the other thing is you can talk to somebody in class or, or maybe you have an IT friend or you can... <laughs> you can actually contact IT and they may be able to help you to set up your email so that it comes directly to your smartphone. So it could be like mine. I get an email, I get an alert immediately. And so I, when any time a student contacts me, I'm getting that right away as long as I'm carrying my phone. Uh, attendance and participation, let's talk about that. So it's really quite minimal. Um, you don't want to be in a position where you're doing this. Uh, if you attend at least once the first two weeks and enroll in my math lab, then you'll be certified as attending the course.
But keep in mind that um, in order to be on schedule, you actually should be up through assignment. It's actually, uh, you know what, I... It's the quiz right after quiz two po or after homework two point seven. Uh, that's where you should be. All right, sorry about that. Uh, so we we're talking about uh, certification. Whoops, let me do something here. So, if you look at the schedule, it's the uh, quiz right after homework two point seven that's actually due on September fourth. Basically, week one, the assignments for we, uh, for chapter one are due, and week two, the chapter uh, two assignments are due. And so you can see that the minimum for certification is not very much at all. So you want to stay on schedule. You want to be getting at least 70% on your assignments. And of course, especially on the homework, you should be shooting for 80%. All right, let's move on. Institutional policies, if you're not familiar with those, you should click on this link uh, in the syllabus online in eCampus, and, uh, and you can find it through the, the main website for the school. But things like disability services and dropping classes, those types of things are there in our policies, so you want to be familiar with those. Or anytime you have questions, you can always go there to find the answers. Um, that's all I want to say about that. Let's look at the schedule. So this is what I was talking about just a minute ago. If you look at the first two weeks, notice uh, we've got eight assignments week one that are due on Sunday, uh, August 28th, and then several assignments that are due week two. Keep in mind, this is like, this is two classes in one, so you're literally doing four and four here, and four and five on the other week. So, but what I found is it's a lot better to load up early than it is later when things get more difficult. And so we do go a little bit faster at the beginning. Um, but anyway, you can see what's due each week, and there should be no question about that. And another thing I want to point out here is the test one deadline is Monday, September twelfth. And so you can see, I, I think things are pretty clear on the calendar. If you have any questions about the calendar or this uh, syllabus, just let me know. I'm sorry, I did really bad this time. It took me almost 18 minutes, but that's it.